Um, okay, so we're talking inverse functions. You've already kind of had a look at it, um, but if you didn't quite get it, we'll go through it now and hopefully this will fill some gaps. All right? So, oh, um, yeah, we're talking inverse functions. Right? I have got um, a web page thing with some questions on that I want you to go through, but we need to do this first. Right, so let me just talk to you first about the stuff that you've already been doing, and that's building up equations or functions, right? So, um, if I start with an x equals 3, for instance, yeah, uh, what I've been asking you to do is build up a function by doing the same thing for both sides. So, for instance, if I double it, I end up with two x's on one side and six. it could be what? Six. six. Yeah, it could be six. But it could equally be six. Three, three plus three. x. Yeah? So I've got two options. I'm going to choose that one. Yeah? yeah. Makes sense? Okay. Um, I could then add four to both sides. So I'm going to have 2x's plus 4, and on this side, it would be 3 plus x plus 4. Plus four. Now this can be simplified by doing... Seven plus like terms. One more word, like collecting terms. like terms. Okay, these are both, what are they called? Like terms. They're like terms, but they're specific. They have a, another uh, name. They like are... Positive numbers. No, they're... Uh, no, um, integers. X is a... Variable and uh, um, digit. This is a variable because it changes with x. Yeah, if, yeah. if x changes, it's changing. These don't change. They are always constant. 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 Oh. So these are these are constant. Yeah, these terms are constant. They are they're always going to be three and four. It doesn't matter. X will depend on what I put x in. Yeah, it will change. But these are like terms, they're both constants, so I can collect them and say x plus 7. All right? So I've not done anything to either side, but I have simplified it. Okay? So actually, this is now my equation. All right? That's the equation that if I then undid, all right, I would figure out that x has to be 3 for that to be true. So do you remember we talked about what it means to solve the equation? Can you rem remind me? Um, to figure out x. No, nope, not going to accept that. To find the value of x. Not going to accept that. You're giving me all the same things that you gave me last time. Oh my god. <gasps> I need a bit more detail. Yes, you are finding x. Yes, you are finding the value. But that does what? Determine the answer that um, completes the equation. No. Solve for x. No. Um, the dots of my problem. Inverse. No, that was the no, no, no. Like, um, um, what was it? Make the statement true. Yes, thank you. Yeah. You're finding x, you're finding the value of x, you're solving for x, right? But the bit I want, which is the understanding, is that makes the statement true. What is the most important part of this statement? Um, no. Equal, yeah? Why is that important? Well, because if something's equal, yeah. they're they not different. The they have to be the same, yeah? So I am saying that this side has to be equal to that side. That will only be true if x is 3. But I can take this as an equation, all right? But I can stick any value in. I could stick x is 7 in. What would have happened? So I would have 14 plus 4 is equal to 7 plus 7, which is 18 is equal to 14. But this symbol is now untrue, it's incorrect. So I can put a line through it and say it's not equal to. All right. So when we solve, 
okay? When we solve, we are finding x, but I would like you to be more specific and say, we're solving to find a value that makes the statement true, all right? And the reason why that makes sense is because I can also, we'll be introducing soon a different symbol, which is where is this side greater than that side? Greater than 1%. Well, that's, well, true. that's, that's one true. option. That's true. Are there any other options? Um, yeah. When x is 5 or 6, or when x is greater than 4. So yeah. when x is actually greater than 4. 3. Oh. Oh, sorry. He meant 4 greater. The reason why it's not 4 is because 3.1 also works, right? Yeah. We're not just dealing with integers, all right? So it'd be greater than 3. So 7 works, but this, these are called inequalities, okay? Not equal to, or they can be equal to as well, but you get the difference. Right, let's, talk you, let's take you back, because we've not quite done it yet. Inverse function. So this process here of building up an equation, well, I'm going to simplify that a little bit to, well, let's say we have y equals 2x plus 3. Okay. So again, I'm, I'm going to ask this, but I don't want you to shout out answers immediately. I want you to take a moment to think, right? What does that mean? Okay. I've just said, don't shout out, take a nod, and I'm going to tell you. So what this statement means, this is another equation, but it's slightly different in that there is no particular value of x. All right? There's no particular value of x that has to go in there. So what this is telling me, same thing, are you happy with equals on either end, yeah? Because yeah. it makes sense that if we think equals is super important, it doesn't matter which side it is, right? Think of it a balance, it doesn't matter which side you put the apple in the bag, it, it's still the same. the same, balancing out. That's It's actually a, a common problem. People look at it, if it's the other way around, they go, oh, what do I do now? It's like, well, you know, you don't same think thing. about it. Yeah, yeah, same thing. So what does this mean? Well, this means if I take a value for x, any value I like, right? Because x represents any number, right? Yeah. What do I do first? Well, I have to multiply it by 2. Or add 2. No? In this case, I, yeah, but I can't add it to itself if I don't know what it is at the moment. Yeah? I multiply it by 2. Right? That, that does mean to add it to itself, but you know, the problem there will be the inverse function thing. Yeah. I then get an answer, right? Yeah. Okay, so that would be the 2x bit. Then I take that answer, okay, whatever result that is, and I do what to it? Add three. Plus three. I add 3 to it. All right, and I get an answer. That answer is called the true value. Y. Yeah. So basically, this is saying Y can be found by doing. 2 lots of x, x plus, plus 3. three. They subtract 3. All right, so for instance, how does that work? Well, if I pick a value for x, 5, what is y? Well, I do 5 times 2, right, equals the question mark, which is 10. I then do 10, add 3, which equals 13. So y is 13. Okay? It's called a function machine. So we do that these are the mathematical operations that I'm doing in the function. Okay? So this is called a function of x. Also meaning the function okay, that is applied to x. Okay? So the function that is applied to x is 2, multiply by 2, then add 3. Yeah? yeah. So what would be and I get an answer. Does that make sense? Yeah. 
So you've kind of been doing it, but you've been doing more complicated stuff than this, actually. All right. What would what would x be doing? Okay. What would oh yeah. X is five. Yeah. Y is thirteen. Yeah? yeah. So what I'm now saying is, if I then asked you to do something, I could say solve two x plus three equals. 13. Then you're finding the X. And we know X is five. five. And you know how to do it, right? Yeah. How do we do it? Mm. David? Subtract three. Subtract so three. Five. And then 2X equals 10. Do you notice that you've reached that point now? You're yeah, undoing yeah. what's being done, yeah? Yeah. yeah. So you're at 13. You're subtracting the three that you added on. So we subtract the 3 and we get that the 2x must equal the 10 bit. Now. Yeah, just divide 2 by 10? Yeah. 10 by 2. Well, so, no, it's not the same thing. Dividing 10 by 2. Split 10 into two pieces because one of those pieces is yeah, an x. Yeah, and the other is 10. So x has to equal 5. five. Okay. What you have just done is applied the inverse function. Okay, does that make sense? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You've done the inverse operation. So let me maybe write that a little bit clearer. So if I say we start with x, the first thing we do in a function machine is to multiply it by 2. We then two x. add 3, and what comes out is y, because we've got y equals 2 lots of x, Plus three. then have 3. Right, okay. How do we solve? Well, we do the opposite. We say, we take our y value and we do what? Minus 3. We take away the 3. And then we divide. You right, Sammy? Your head's down? Yeah, yeah I'm just looking at this one. And then divide by 2. And then we do divide by 2. And what comes out? The x value that we started with, yeah? Which is five. Now, here's the deal. This is the inverse operation of plus three. This is the inverse operation of times two. So is inverse like a, a opposite? Yeah. Inverse opposite. Okay? So inverse operations are the things that you do to undo what has been done. All right? So do you remember, I have mentioned it, and I think you guys are great because you don't do it anyway. I've said to some people, some teachers will teach you to move things from side to side, yeah? yeah. Move it from this side to that side, change it. All of that's rubbish, I think, my opinion. Right? Because what's actually happening is you have to unbuild what was done. That's what we've been doing, yeah? yeah. So with the algebra tiles, you're actually deleting the tiles, right? Yeah, you're, you're not moving them. Together. You're deleting them. You're taking them away or adding them. Yeah. Right? You've done both to build and destroy. Right? So the homework you just did was building an equation, which is this process. That's the build. All right? And this is the... Dismantle, all right? Or take, apart. take it apart to figure out where we started. So the dismantling of it is the inverse. You have to undo everything. But what's also important, guys, can you see if I write it like this, you're doing it also in the inverse order. The yeah. order in which you do it is all important. You can't just do the inverse operations in any order you like. Yeah. But if you were to do if you were to switch the arrows on the bottom, it would be x divided by 2 plus minus 3, which is no. different than y divided by 2 minus 3. So, yeah, well, if I put a divide by 2 here first and well, then different. type subtracted yeah. 3, it'd it's be 13 divided by 2. Which is 6 and a half. Yeah, it doesn't give three you the same half. result, does it? X is 3 and a half, and I, x is 5. Okay, so the next stage, which I'm kind of hoping you're at, is to write that as an inverse operation. 
not inverse operand, an inverse function. So if I write that y equals 2x plus 3, and the inverse operation, the, I keep saying it, the inverse function, okay, is um, y, y minus 3 oh, yeah. divide by 2. You'll notice that this gets, all of it is divided by 2. Yeah. That equals x. x. Or, yeah. All right? That is your inverse function. But here's the, the big thing. You've already said about swapping the x's and y's, right? Yeah. And that's because what we do, this now becomes a function in yeah. its own yeah. right. Yeah, I get that now. All right? And when we write a function, we what's the input? The input is always x an or x, y. and we go to y. Or so or instead of treating this as the opposite of this one, we write it as its own function. So instead of saying start with y and end up at x, we actually just say, well, normally we start with the x, subtract 3, and end up at y. Yeah? So this is what we would say is the inverse operation of that one. Although if you actually apply it as an inverse, you're actually using the x as the final one, yeah? And you're, you're starting with the y. Does that make sense? All right? Yeah. So that's the, the logic of it. But there is a reason why it doesn't make a lot of sense actually in a in a real world scenario to swap the x and y and it's because we don't use x and y in the real world right but i won't do that yet right um let's go through a, a couple more inverse functions all right so if y equals um 4x minus 2, you can write out the inverse. So I'll just write a few out now, and you do. Those of you that have got it, let's see, those of you not. So my advice, now whether you do this on paper, or whether you can do it in your head, only you will decide at this point. I suggest if you're not quite there, you'll need to do it on paper. So what I do to figure out the inverse function when I'm starting off, I start with the x, and do you know like you just did with your homework? Yeah. And then I look at it and go, right, what was done to the x? Because remember, you started with x equals 2 and then built stuff up, yeah? Yeah. So let's figure out what was done to build this, and then we can dismantle it. In the op We have to know how it was built to take it apart. Yeah. So we start with x. What is the first thing that was done to it? So, multiplied it by four. It was multiplied by four first. Then we subtracted, subtracted, two. Two. subtracted two. Okay, and we got the y. So, what do we do? The inverse function then, I can write the opposite. So, I'm going to keep it in the same direction. So, we start with the y and we do what first? Add two. Add two. Other David, next um, thing. And then we divide by four. Divide by four, and we end up back at x. Yeah. So this is the destroying of it. So you now we have to write that though, x equals using instead of y, using x, x, and instead of x, using y. So we say y equals, and we write it, build it, but this way. X has what done to it first? Divide it. No. Add two. We yeah. add two to it first. And then divide everything by four. Then we divide everything by four. And there's your inverse function. So that's oh. it. That's it. Oh. Yeah. Okay. We don't, but we don't oh. have to, that doesn't find out what y or x No, it won't. No, we don't have we to. Just have there, there is no one. x and y. I've not told you what they are. This now, if I tell you what x is, you could work out what y is. Yeah. If for this one, if I then told you what the y was, you could work out the x. That's what the inverse. But we have this is like 
you remember I said algebra was our mathematical way of communicating what we want to do yeah. before we actually have to do it. And so there are no numbers to go in there yet. So all I'm saying is, this is the function, this is the function that will undo the other function. Yeah? Yeah, and the other question was the t, right? Because t, um, I don't know, did you check? I'm not. Should we have a look at this next one? How do you feel? Yeah? Um, Wait, Mr. Have a seat. I'll come in round in a bit. Okay. Um, okay. okay, well, let's. Uh, um, what is. Because my computer going slow. I want to select that and move it down a bit. That's right. No. Okay, so. First thing, like I said, if you are finding it even remotely a struggle, lay it out as a function machine first. So, remember, the y is at the end. The x is where we start. This is the build, yeah? Yeah. I've got to figure out how it was built. So I started with x, and the first thing I did was? Add three. Add three. How do I know it was add 3 and not divide by 2, David? Because it's dividing everything by 2. Okay, good. Because the line goes under everything, I have to have added 3 first. Mm -hmm. And this is the important thing. We have to get those in the right order, otherwise we'll get the wrong answer at the end. So we add 3 first, and then we uh, divide, divide by two. 2. And what comes out? Y. 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 Okay, so what we do then, we have to fill, figure out how we can unbuild it. So this time, look, I'll just put a Y, and I always work the other way because that's what we're doing, right? Yeah. I, I'm not going to change, my arrows are going the opposite way. Now, if you like, I, instead of writing over here, I can write it under and just say, right, what's the first thing I do to unbuild it, Sammy? Um, multiply by two. Sammy, your voice travels and it's not the same. Mood. Sammy, what do we do first? Times by two. Good. So we have to undo this divide by two first, so we times by two. Okay? Oh, what's happening? Aaliyah. Um, I've done the times by two. What would I do next? Subtract three. Subtract three. Good. That would come out. Now it's up to you. So I can change the x and the y now, or we can do it afterwards. Which do you prefer? After. After? OK. Yeah. So let's take this one and rewrite it. Two. OK. So we're going to start with the y. Right? What do we do to the y? Uh, times it by two. How do I write that correctly? You just put a two. Two y's. So two y's. Oh, yeah? Then I... Subtract three. Is it B? Yeah. 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 Right. And the answer I get is? Y. X. X. Right? Because I've done it this way. Like right. So right. then, up to you how you do that, but if I then delete the Y and the X and write them the other way around, I get y. 2X minus 3 is equal to 1. Now, oh, do you notice, nice. because of the way I do it, my inverse has got the y on the right side. My function, my build, has got the y on the left side. Does that matter? No. no. So I, I would actually rewrite this probably just for convention. You know what I mean by convention? Yeah. Convenience. Yeah. Well, it's more like Either this one. is what we all do to be yeah. the same. I would rewrite it as y equals 2x minus 3. Okay, so I got it. Yeah. So that is the inverse of that. Make sense? Yeah. Matthew, Wait, make sense? Can I talk? Yeah. Can I talk? Yeah. Can I talk? Chill. Chill. It's about <laughs> pushing too far and other people not being... I'm going to add something in here. So, for instance, I just want to check, because some people are having more problems than I thought they would do. If I take 2x like this, and I tell you x is equal to uh, 2, what does this equal? Um, Hang on, everyone think. Is there anyone that doesn't know what that would equal? 
So every hand up doesn't know what it would equal. Oh, I do. Well, then put your hand down. Oh. Right? Oh. Is there anyone that doesn't know? So you all know, liar. Mm. Tell me what the answer is then, if you know. Two. Two. <laughs> I was looking at someone else. And now you've ruined our learning moment. <laughs> but then, you know. So, what we do, remember what we do with this. This means what? Um, Two x's, yeah? yeah? So it means, if I ask you what does this equal, I'm asking you to say, instead of x, put a 2, right? Yeah. So this would mean... Two times two. 2 times 2, four. then four. divide by 4, four. then add 1. Yeah. Make sense? Yeah. So, four right. by so 4 yeah. divided by 4 is 1, plus 1 is equal to 2. two. two. Oh, right. I said 1, I meant 2. Okay. So if you know that's what you would say, so for instance, let's do x is equal to 16. It would be what, Nico? 2 times oh. 2 times 16 then divide by 4, four then add yeah, one. 1 and I would get an answer 30. so 2 times 16 is 32 uh, 30. divided by 4, four eight, nine. 9 9, nine. Yeah. alright okay so basically what we're doing Tristan, Tristan what we're doing is we're looking at this and we're saying right what were the things that got done to the 16 yeah well the first thing I had to double it so that's what this bit says so I start with x I times 2 what was the next thing I did divide by 4 right then I added 1 and what was the answer? Well, in this case, it was 9. But, it would be but one. normally, it would be y. y. Okay, whatever it is. Okay. So now, the inverse is what I would do if I said to you, well, 2x plus divide by 4 plus 1 is equal to 23. What was my x? All right? I'm not asking for the answer. Let's figure out what the inverse would be. So what I would do is I would start with the 23. But in this case, I'm just going to start with the y. What would I do first to the 23? Subtract 1. Subtract the 1. Then times, four. times it by four. 4. Then divide, divide by, by two. 2. And I would get x. x. So how do I rewrite that? Well, I would rewrite it like this. Start with y. Then write, what does y minus 1 look like? Well, it looks like y subtract 1. Then, and here's the problem a couple of you with your spelling, is multiply all of that by 4. So we have to bracket and 4 on the front, not on the back. All of that has to be divided by 2. And I get the answer x. And to finish off, I would get rid of the y, get rid of the x. And switch them out. Switch them out. Yeah. Okay, so There's my inverse. I was, 